So what I'm going to demonstrate here is how we go about using petrol to kill a colony. Uh, if the material is going to be burnt, then uh, petrol is fine. Be mindful of the fact that uh, smokers and petrol don't mix for very obvious reasons. Petrol being highly combustible and some major accidents will occur if you don't have a lot of... Uh, uh, spend a lot of caution in relation to keeping these things separate. So when we're killing bees with petrol, we usually do it at the night time. So after all the bees have come back into the hive, there's no field bees at all. Um, so as we can't film this at the night time, we're demonstrating it during the daytime. So it, it is important to repeat that this procedure is done at the night time. But we'd seal the hive. If we don't have an entrance closer, then we need to use a bit of tape or something to actually fill the entrance to, to stop the bees coming out the front. There's not a lot of bees in this hive that, seeing it's fairly advanced in its disease, but uh, if there was a lot of bees in this hive, when we throw the petrol in, a lot of the bees might run out the front. So we want to prevent that from occurring, so we've sealed that front. In this case, if we're preparing the hives during the day to be killed that night, uh, we would have taken the inner cover out, out, out and the queen excluder. So in this case, there's a few bees in there. So it's prepared now for using petrol. Come back of a night time, you seal it up. You've got your petrol and your smoker. Smoker you put right away from your petrol, preferably someone else in the, that's helping you with the process has got the smoker and you don't have the smoker with the petrol. So we've got a bit of petrol, this is ample enough to do this job, probably only need even half of that. That's a 500 gram jar, so that's 200 grams, 200 millilitres or 250 millilitres is probably all you need per hive. And as I said, this is not a very strong hive. Uh, seal it up, so they're just splashed over the top of the frames. And we can leave that and come back to that in a few minutes time. It doesn't take very long, so this has been uh, treated for about a minute or so. Uh, we'll open the hive and just have a bit of a look. First thing we should do before we open the hive is just have a bit of a listen. Can we hear any buzzing in the hive? If there's a lot of buzzing, we might have to lift the lid again and throw some more petrol in there. Just to uh, finish it off, another couple of hundred uh, millilitres, but in this case I can't hear any buzzing so we'll open it up and it's completely uh, dead. Bar one or two bees struggling. But in this case we'll just lift this hive and there's just no activity in there at all to speak of. So we've been 100% successful in killing this particular colony. Um, be mindful of the fact if we threw this straight onto a fire that we would have instant combustion with the petrol. So. It's uh, fair and reasonable to leave this for a few hours just to let the petrol evaporate. But be mindful of the fact that we have got petrol and the idea is to burn the material. If I just take this box and put it sideways, you can see all the bees now have well and truly died. And uh, there's a few individuals still uh, just living, but uh, this colony has been uh, killed by the fumes from the petrol. So the petrol doesn't have to actually come in contact with the bees, it's simply the fumes from the petrol that is killing the uh, bees. So if we left this for another couple of minutes, there'd be absolutely no life left in this particular hive. The trouble with using petrol to kill a colony for a gamma radiation is the combs that we've just had petrol scattered across are now essentially contaminated, so they shouldn't be used again in a beehive. So these combs would have to be destroyed. We could, uh, if we were going to use petrol to kill a colony, take out all the combs if we're going to radiate material, take all the combs out that we wanted to keep and to extract the honey and, and get it radiated and bring back in the system and any old combs that we didn't care for that we wanted to destroy or throw away anyway we could leave them in the hive with the bees use the petrol technique to kill the bees and therefore we're not contaminating those particular combs so those combs and the bees can be burnt and you might want to save the box if it's going to be irradiated. It's also important not to let this stuff, as again I've said in the previous uh, clips, that it's important not to leave stuff exposed to bees. So once we've killed the colony, it needs to be processed. Either take, take them back into a hive, back, back into the shed, 
or the garage where it's bee proof and the, uh, the uh, material um, prepared for irradiation or burnt more or less straight away. If it's going to be stored for any length of time, it's very important to make sure the material is stored away from field bees and in a shed somewhere where bees can't get access. With regard to burning, how do you go about doing that? Burning, uh, we would dig a significant hole in the ground, say a couple, three, four feet in uh, diameter, if we just have one particular hive, uh, place the box in it, and then uh, put a match onto it, let it burn down to ashes, and then cover that back with dirt. Preferably 30 centimetres of soil over the top, but the main thing is to not let the wax and honey flow out from the fire and uh, become available to the bees. So you want to contain that honey and wax as it's burning in the hole. Then once the fire is finished, then you fill it in with dirt to cover it over. Be mindful of the fact that it's fire, so you make sure there's no hazardous material around the fireplace that could catch on light like long grass or buildings, etc.